The Coors Crisis, also known as the Coors Revolution, happened during the 1970s and 1980s. It was a disruptive period in the watch industry, primarily triggered by the development of the widespread adoption of quartz movement technology, which was, of course, far more accurate and affordable than traditional mechanical movements. During the history, we can see that certain trends and currents happen more than once. And judging from the recent releases into the watch world, we can name our period the luxury crisis. We see more and more watch manufacturers established in China that provide more and more alternatives to luxury watch brands, and by alternative I mean a watch that doesn't clone the brand but gets the inspiration from it and makes it sometimes better and affordable. And they even provide a true Japanese mechanical movement, sapphire crystal and high water resistance even beating the price of an entry-level Casio. For sure, a lot of us had their eyes on luxury models from Swiss watch manufacturers. But not all of us could afford such investment in a watch, but in an era where luxury often comes with a hefty price tag, there is a watch brand named Addis Dive that stands out by delivering quality timepieces that are accessible to all. Firstly, they appeared in the watch market as a brand that got their inspiration from the design elements of luxury brands and they managed to be a big hit into the watch world and made themselves known as a brand established in China that can deliver high quality timepieces at stunningly affordable prices. All this can be translated in simple terms as homage watches, because they make homage watches. But they also listen to their customers and try to improve their design and even produce their own versions with aesthetics and mechanical elements that watch enthusiasts would consider a too good to be true deal. And to be fully transparent, I'm not paid by anyone to make this review. This watch is part of my watch collection and everything that I say here is just my honest opinion about the watch and about the brand. And my perspective here is from the owner's perspective. This year I had my first interaction with this brand when I got my hands on the newly released Addis Dive model number AD2066 with the mint green dial version. Talking about the first impressions, the dial looks stunningly good. The pale mint green and sunburst finish dial, it's an eye catcher even in darker conditions. The applied indices are loomed, this time with a BGW9 blue loom that we will address a bit later as there is something that needs to be discussed here. The hands are nicely polished and they feature a considerable amount of luma as well. And talking about the hands, the second's hand can't be unseen here as from an untrained eye it can trick you into thinking that it hides a mechanical movement inside. But it's actually just a simple VH31 quartz movement that features the Mecha Quartz technology proving that you don't need a mechanical movement to get the sweeping seconds hand. Quartz watches like the AD2066 operate with minimal mechanical parts, relying on the oscillation of a quartz crystal powered by a battery. This results in a timepiece that requires less maintenance and ensures exceptional timekeeping precision, deviating by only a few seconds per month. And a good aspect of a quartz watch with a sweeping seconds hand is the fact that you don't have to be as careful as with a mechanical watch, making it friendly with shocks and magnetic fields. And I'm talking about this from the perspective of a person that uses a laptop every day that features a strong magnet inside. My work laptop managed to damage one of my Seikos, but a watch like this Eddie's Zive with a VH31 quartz movement I'm pretty sure that is able to manage these magnetic fields like a champ. As I said before, quartz crisis hits again, not only with the technology inside, but with its casing features transforming this era into a luxury crisis. The watch boasts a 36mm stainless steel case, which offers a sleek yet robust frame ideal for both casual and formal occasions. Stainless steel is highly resistant to corrosion, and ensures the watch's longevity even under harsh conditions. I still see today brands that use brass plated cases. This watch paired with the quartz movement will exceed the longevity of those brass plated cases 
for almost the same price. On my 6.5 inch wrist the case sits perfectly and embraces my wrist as the case shape and lugs slightly bend down making it comfortable to wear. And talking about how slick it actually is, the case thickness without the domed crystal reaches the thickness of 9mm. While including the crystal the whole combo doesn't exceed more than 11mm. The 36mm case diameter, 11mm case thickness and 46mm lug to lug distance makes this unit suitable for sport, casual and even dress situations. If for such price the water resistance of it could be questionable, the 100 meters water resistance should cover almost any situation that involves water, apart from the diving moments when for sure you should choose a diving monitor or proper diver watch. But in any case, the screw down case back and the screw down crown are there to have you covered in case you still want to check the time while having fun in the pool or in case you want to give it a pause in a bowl of water no judging here. And as we were talking about the luxury features of this watch, the case back and the crown are both signed, featuring the Adidas Dive logo. Usually on brands that are considered affordable, you don't get to see a signed crown. But I see that they managed to sign it and the finishing of it is nicely done. And if we refer to the finishing, the brushed and polished surfaces are razor sharp delimited. They even took care of the packaging to give you the best experience of getting a watch that looks like new and for its owners to fully appreciate the great craftsmanship of a surprisingly affordable watch. Usually in the affordable category you don't get such finishing and attention to details. The same attention to details and features is also given to the bracelet that is made out of solid links featuring solid end links and a nicely finished milled clasp secured with a double push button mechanism, while the clasp is signed as well. They chose to fit the links together with simple push pins and for situations if your wrist expands and needs a few millimeters more or less to make it fit properly, they added 5 micro adjustments. The lag is unfortunately 19 millimeters. I wished it was 20 or 18 millimeters for a higher versatility. But given the fact that today lots of strap manufacturers make 19 millimeter straps, it shouldn't be that much of a problem in case you want to change the look of it with a sailcloth strap or a leather one. As we know already, nobody is perfect and no watch is perfect either. Wearing it for a bit more than a week, I discovered two points that I think could have been, let's say, different. I know that we don't necessarily need a sapphire crystal, but for this one I would have preferred a domed sapphire. On their website they specify that the crystal is actually a K1 domed mineral glass, with AR coating that, to be honest, does a great job and keeps all reflections hidden. While searching the internet for what K1 mineral crystal means, I found out that K1 mineral glass is a type of watch crystal that combines features of both standard mineral glass and sapphire glass. It's a hardened mineral glass with improved durability and scratch resistance, compared to ordinary mineral glass, making it a middle ground between the two most commonly used sapphire and mineral glass. This being said, it sounds just like the Hardlux crystal from Seiko. I know from my experience that in order to scratch a mineral glass you really have to be pretty brutal with the watch. But given the fact that they used the K1 type, maybe for an everyday watch like this it could be a good sign as sometimes people don't bother too much about scratches but about shattering in case of an impact with a wall or a concrete floor. Another aspect that I think should be discussed is the loom that is there to do its job, but can't be compared with the loom of a diver watch where once you expose it to light, it keeps its luminescence the whole night. But apart from the slightly rapid fade of the loom, it is blue, which is a nice touch and not that commonly found in homage affordable watches. And this Eddie's Dive AD2066 stands as a prime example of how the modern luxury crisis is reshaping the watch industry. 
much like the court's crisis of the past, this shift is being driven by brands that prioritize delivering high-quality affordable alternatives to traditional luxury models. Maybe I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video, but on their website you can get it for under 100 US dollars. In case you want to check it and give it a try, I left a link to their website in the description of this video, where you can also find other versions and some deals as well. I personally got it from their website. And it might sound too good to be true, but we can see that over the years such brands like Eddie's Dive managed to make luxury Swiss-made brands look like a total ripoff, with their long waiting lists and their absurd price tags. And I'm not throwing mud against those brands. In fact, we wouldn't have these watches without them. But with such homages, you can definitely scratch that itch and still not fall for the clone category where I wouldn't recommend anyone to fall. In the meantime, I will keep wearing it as I love the look and feel of it and as good as it looks on paper, only the test of time will be able to show its true capacity. And if you like this video, remember to hit the like button and if you want to support this channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button. My name is Ed and you watched another episode from Brisaga.